if you were given $1,440 every day to spend, how would you spend it? Every day you'd be given it, but part of the deal is you are unable to carry over some of the balance to spend a little more the next day. It had to be spent. Would you spend it wisely? What would you do with that kind of a resource? How about time? Time. Because each of us, we are given 1,440 minutes every day. And so how do we steward, how do we invest this irreplaceable resource? It is a resource. It has been said that time is an equal opportunity employer. Each human being has exactly the same number of hours and minutes every day. You can't buy more minutes. A scientist cannot uh, invent more minutes. And you can't save time to spend it on another day. Well, you can waste some wealth and perhaps things might work out where you might be able to retrieve some of that. There can be a life after bankruptcy. You, if you waste your health, and you make poor decisions there, wasted health, you seldom recover from that. But a waste of time can never be reclaimed. So I think the case can really be made that time is the most valuable resource that is given to us. And I'd like for us to explore how the Bible comes in on that value of time, that gift of time that we've been given. Uh, first of all, the psalmist declares this. It says, and we begin many of our worship services with this, this is the day that the Lord has made. That's talking about the opportunity on this day God has made it, and in the midst of what God has created, there is an opportunity for us to make the best of it. We also can look in the book of Ecclesiastes, where Ecclesiastes tell us that for everything there is a season. The time to live, the time to die, the time to harp. There is a timing that, that the scriptures talk about, that there is a season for that. And then as we look at the reading this morning from Ephesians 5, it directs us to do what? But to look carefully then. How you walk, not as unwise people, but to have some intelligence there, to make some informed decisions, making the most of the time, time. So what is the Apostle Paul getting at when he says and announces for us to make the most of our time? I think making the most of the time, he's talking about an accountability that we have with this sacred resource. Now, we hear the expression, time is money. No, time's money. Time's money. I, I, you know, a physician now, the, kind of the, 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 the process is get the patients in, get them out, get them in, get them out. Time is money. The more we can see, the more we can make. You go to a restaurant. Let's eat. And let's get out of here because they need to turn the table again. Time is money. Time is money. And it's kind of a, what we live by today because the way we handle time, we can, you know, it, it has a direct effect on the kind of money that, that one can make. But we also find that there is a challenge in the Bible about that. And it is a challenge for us to redeem the time because we are to realize that time is God's. It's God's. It's, it's not money, but there is a sacred aspect to this gift of breath and life and the times that we have. 
I like to think of time as, as a member of the stewardship trinity. Time, talent, and treasure. We hear a lot about it. You know, we, we, we tie and rank them, we, we take our, our abilities, our talents, and we steward them. But time is also very critical as well. In fact, I, I like uh, uh, what one person has said, and it's, it's a popular statement these days, that what you are is God's gift to you, but what you choose to become is your gift to God. And by that I mean, God has created us, he's given us a gift of time, an opportunity, and then pleasing God is like God is saying, hey, that's my crazy other way to go, way to go. We want to please God. I mean, I think of the story of, of grace on wings. It, it, it started at a point of people realizing what their talent is, what their skill is, and considering what might God do if we do something new and take some risk. It all started... Uh, when, when Hal and a few other physicians were in Peru, in the Amazon <laughs> forest, and they were on a mission, kind of like the mission that this church did in Nicaragua. They were there, uh, but they were bringing uh, medicine, medical care, treatment to hurting people in Peru. And they realized, you know, we like to fly, and we love medicine, and there's people who hurt. Maybe God wants us to do something with these gifts we have and to start a way to where we can honor Christ through aviation. And so they, they realized the abilities they have and the time was just right for a new ministry to happen. I'm glad that Hal mentioned that it didn't happen when he was a youngster. It didn't happen when, when he was in, in college pursuing you know, what what. What direction am I going? It came later in their lives. And if you read that story in the book, Answering the Call, God is always calling us. God is calling you. Wherever you are in your life stage right now, as to how you use your time and your talent to honor the Lord. So we are to make the most of the time is what the scripture is talking about. And as Christ followers, it has to do at its core with the desire to seek God's guidance and allowing that to happen, to recognize that God has created you for the good being accomplished that God has established for you. Earlier in Ephesians, uh, this point is made by Paul. He says, for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do what? To do good works. Not that good works makes us more lovable to God. God loves us and did everything on the cross for us. But because of that, we are called to do some good in this world. To do good works which God has prepared in advance for us to do. So our connection with the purposes of our creation, with the gifts that we have, with the time that we have, and to allow that to be part of the good that we do to the honor and to the glory of God. And you put that into action by asking the Lord each morning to help you identify, Lord, what is this good that I am to be about today for your glory? You identify the good that God has planned for you on that day, and you do it. You do the best you can with it. Ask the Lord to show you how and when and to who you might touch for the glory of God by using your time and your talent and the treasures that God has given you. But there's another thing to do that I'd like to highlight this morning. And you ask the Lord in the midst of considering our stewardship of time to manage your time. A number of years ago, I was pastor in St. Louis. And I was, it was a, a, a university church right at the entrance of the University of Missouri in St. Louis. And the, I was a senior pastor. We were filled with professors. And one of our church members was not only a professor at Umsel, but he also was essentially the national expert on time management. His name is Larry Baker. He published the book, The New Time Management. He was my neighbor. 
He also, for those of you who might remember the old Nightingale Conant cassette tapes that you would learn, he was the person who did, Larry Baker, who did the new time management. He had a whole series. He flew all over the world talking about time management. And one day he, he was, was, came in his driveway, was getting on the car. I said, Larry, I want to ask you a question. What is the most important insight you can tell me about time management? Now, he's a Christ follower. He's a part of the church. He, he has written extensively on it, and he says, Lonnie, what the most important thing you need to know about time management is distinguishing between what is urgent and what is important. We can't get those two things confused. Well, what do you mean? And, and, and I think about what he said. He said, we get people alarming us all the time. They're calling. They're, they're interrupting. They're, they're, they're saying, this is an issue. This is urgent. Take, come on, pay attention to what I have here for you. It, we, we hear the urgent rings, but quite often, because it's noisy, we surrender what is really important for us to spend our time on, and we waste our time with something that is urgent than another person. And so he says it's good practice every day to sit down and say, what is urgent and what is really important? And when we allow that resource of what the scriptures say of the sanctity of holy time, making the most of the time that we have, and allow that to be one of the filters in which we ask ourselves, what is the most important thing for me to do now? Now, for those of you with children, you know, what the most important, important thing to do is be a parent for your kids. Parent them, love them. That's the most important thing you can do right now because there will be a time they, they will leave. And then, you know, they'll, they'll go on, and, and how you invest yourself at that time is so important. But I think for those of us who, who, who the children, they've grown up, they've gone off, and, and they're, they're raising our grandkids. But for us now, at this season in, in, in life, post having kids, to again ask the question, what is important for me to do now? And I, it, it's important to, you know, have recreation, do those kinds of things, to have a balance in our lives. But, you know, God, I don't think, is ever done with us till God calls us home. There is something important, I believe, for each one of us to grab a hold of and distinguish between what is important for me to do and allow that to be a barometer on what I do. It's kind of what we do with board meetings with grace on wings. You know, what is really important? What's the core values of this ministry? It's what we do here as a local church. There's, there's so many things that we can do that, that are cries for help. We get all kinds of, of requests. There's urgent needs. But then we have to say, what is important to what we are about and what God has called this church to be its particular thumbprint of God's handiwork in this community. But we also have that, I think, in, in our home life, in our relationships with friends, our relationships with family. What is important that we do? And, and really, that's something that you discern as you walk with God in discerning God's will for you. Well, it, it is interesting. Uh, so in other words, do what is important. I, I read something recently. This was a, an article from Account Tips. They found that executives, they lose 60 hours each year being placed on hold. Can you imagine that? Another 288 <laughs> hours attending unnecessary meetings. <laughs> Friends, we, let's never have an unnecessary meeting at this church. We meet, there's reason to meet, because we got some action to do. We don't meet formally in a meeting just to have a rap session, okay? It's, you know, if, if, if we're doing, that can be another kind of a meeting, but make the most of the meeting. Don't make it unnecessary. 128 hours are blown reading and writing unnecessary memos and letters and emails. It's just something that you gotta keep the communication going. So decide what's really important and arrange your time and resources to reflect those values. And you might say, well, I'm tired of that. I just, I just want to chill out. I want to take these. But why is it important, though, for Paul to say, make the most of your time? Here's why it is important, because time is of essence. We, we can't get it back. We uh, have to make the best of it. And going into that with that sense of, God, what is your will for my life? What is your, your purpose for me? And to realize that time is of essence. And, you know, going back to the Psalms, we started with the reading from the Psalms. 
for this message. The psalmist in Psalm 90 says, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Of wisdom. So I want to encourage you to think of time maybe differently than you have in the past. To value it, to treasure it, to be a steward of it. Yeah, go out, have a, have a good time. Sometimes you need to chill out and go on the sofa and watch mindless stuff. I understand that. But don't let that control all that you are about. For as we read the scriptures, God created us. The scripture tells us that we were created to do the good that he has in store for us, that kind of good. And we are to do that with the great sense that the time is of essence. Because we have a world where people hurt. People even hurt in this room. Just because you're a Christ follower doesn't mean that, that there's not going to be torment and there's not going to be disappointment. But as part of what we are about as a community, realizing time is of essence. And may the Lord teach us to treasure those days, those hours, that 1,440 minutes that we are given each day to realize I don't want to live in the regret zone of my life. I want to embrace the prospects, <coughs> the sacred prospects of what God can do in this great irreplaceable gift of time. Would you stand? Let's pray together. Lord, we are grateful for the breath that we breathe this moment, for the time of gathering with our sacred family and worship, for the inspiration of your word, for the music we sing, and for the movement of your spirit to challenge us to be, to be more in line with the blessing we can have of the spirit-filled life. Teach us, Lord, and help us as we number our days, as we treasure them, and as we steward them for your glory. We would ask this in the name of the Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us